Okay. Uh, so just now we mentioned um, how meditation can boost one's sleep. So now uh, we would like to explore how how meditation can affect our brain and how it affects our behavior. Okay. So meditation, if we want to think of it like this, is like exercise for our brains. Um, but it's like anaerobic exercise. Um, thinking, studying, um, writing, solving problems is like aerobic exercise for the brain. We need aerobic and anaerobic exercise. And it's the same for our brain. The brain needs to be very active and engaged and focused learning new things, it keeps it um, generative and alive. But the brain also, like the rest of the body, needs a restful phase. And so meditation is like anaerobic exercise for the brain. It's uh, what enables the brain to go into rest mode. Um, just like sleep enables the body to, and the brain to renew itself, meditation is a very, very deep state shown in some studies to be deeper than the rest we get during a night's sleep that allows the brain to renew and reset and restore and regenerate itself. Um, this assists in mental health maintenance, it improves memory, uh, empathy, for social relationships, our sense of self. And uh, research it by Harvard researchers uh, found that meditating for only eight weeks on a regular daily basis actually significantly changed the brain's gray matter, which is the cortex. White matter is the subcortical matter. So uh, what they found was increase in gray matter, cortical matter in the brain. So what, what actually, what is meditation? How does meditation work? As you mentioned, there are like various types of meditation are all of them good or there's maybe there's a superior one a superior type of meditation well um uh, they are different um research does show that uh, a number of different types of meditation do uh, are associated with increased growth of subcortical uh, brain matter or white matter and cortical uh, or gray matter, uh, new neurons, new pathways. It's what we call neuroplasticity and meditation's really great for that. Um, what I'm gonna do is, um, if I can, share my screen with you. And I'd like to, hold on, share screen. And, no, it's not going to work. Um, so the screen the slide I was going to show you is a study on the meditation that I learned just after graduating from university and still practice transcendental meditation. Mm. And what we see in this is uh, electroencephalographic uh, activity in the front of the brain mm. um, during rest and electroencephalographic activity in the front of the brain uh, during meditation, transcendental meditation. What we see is that during rest, uh, there is some light uh, prefrontal activity, but during the meditation, mm -hmm. there's very strong prefrontal activity, uh, which is characterized by coherent alpha waves in the frontal area of the brain. That means um, instead of random bouncing around bits of activity that you usually see in the brain, mm -hmm. the brain waves are actually working in phase with one another across from one side of the brain to the other. You normally don't see that. That means something way down deep mm -hmm. in the subcortical area of the brain is happening to integrate the two hemispheres. Mm -hmm. So you get intra-hemispheric coherence. Now the frontal area of the brain is a problem-solving area. It is the area where uh, higher reasoning, uh, ethical and moral thinking, creativity, empathy, all are processed. Um, so to have that becoming more coherent, um, to have it becoming more integrated, neuroplasticity, in other words, taking place during just this 20-minute 
period of meditation is very important uh, in terms of what anaerobic exercise for the brain or deep rest we would correctly call it can do for restructuring and rearranging um, the brain uh, and its activities and that has a big spillover into human performance and quality of life i see so meditation can literally change your brain it can and it does um, what's important is regular practice you can't just say oh god i'm feeling stressed i'm going to meditate okay. it's 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 like uh, oh i haven't slept for a week i better have a nap mm, oh. you can't do that it's got to be as much part of your rhythm as eating and sleeping uh, because the benefits are cumulative then uh, dr cherry would you sh can you share your daily meditation routine sure um, well, I, as I say, I learned the meditation that I'm doing when I had just graduated uh, from university after my graduate studies in Australia. And then after that, I went on to Harvard University and did further studies and a doctorate. Um, but I'd been, as a graduate student, I'd actually tried a few different meditations because I was interested in meditation and my clinical psychology uh, graduate research thesis was on progressive muscle relaxation, uh, which was a form of mindfulness, what we would now call mindfulness meditation, attention to relaxing different parts of the body. So I was already sort of both professionally and personally interested in this. So I tried different meditations and somehow didn't feel that I was getting as deep as I thought I could. Uh, and my mind was going off here and there. Um, then a friend told me about some of the research on transcendental meditation, so I thought I'd give it a try. And my very first meditation, I found I had a very, very deep experience. I could just feel, you know, my attention going from out to in and very deep within. And I felt so settled and I just felt this is the meditation experience that I thought I could have and wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And now I'm having it. And I've had that every time since learning that in my mid-20s, mm -hmm. um, twice a day, ever since, every day. Um, yeah. I get that feeling of really deep rest, deeply settled, um, and a peace within. And you feel that the body is just sorting itself out. You don't have to sort it out. Whereas in my graduate research on progressive muscle relaxation, you focus on, you know, your thigh muscles and you work to relax those and your shoulder muscles and you work to relax those. With the meditation, you're not doing anything. It's like from that state of very deep rest, it's all just like, organizing like, itself. Like, yeah, you're, you're going to the command center and just pressing the reset button and everything gets uh, realigned, yeah. So that's 20 minutes twice a day. I've done some advanced courses, so I do a little bit longer. And I also do yoga before my meditation just to relax and stop from being too busy and mentally active. And then I do five to 10 minutes of yoga breathing called pranayama, pranayama, which you can also find on YouTube. So those steps of the yoga, the, med the pranayama or yoga breathing Put you in a very settled state for when you start the meditation so you're not starting feeling rushed you're starting feeling settled and you can go deeper and you come out feeling very refreshed yeah i agree sometimes it's quite tough to just start meditating with a racing heart in mind yeah so um other than uh so you you've shared your exp your first experience meditating and how you how you started transcendental meditation and so do you have any tips for people who want to start meditating or who might want to incorporate meditation into their daily routine? Yeah. Um, I would, uh, you know, from my experience, um, I, I personally recommend Transcendental Meditation and you can learn about it um, through a website called the David Lynch Foundation. David Lynch, the movie director, does this meditation and has set up a foundation supporting research and teaching in this. So there's a lot of information there. Um, there's a research, there's a writer called Bob 
Roth, R-O-T-H, who's written some good books on this, mm -hmm. for other kinds of meditation, mindfulness meditation. Um, there's quite a lot on YouTube, excuse me, um, that goes into the experience and process uh, of meditation that you can learn. Um, but uh, the thing is that um, it's good to learn from experts. So um, if you're doing YouTube, learn from someone who's very experienced and who just gives you a feeling, yeah, this feels okay. Not that they're talking fast and telling you how to relax. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to have a sort of sense, this feels right to me. Uh, and then follow. And then the main thing is regular practice. The thing about meditation is that if anyone tells you it's struggle and it's hard, they're wrong. Uh, people will tell you that, but yeah. they're wrong. It's a misunderstanding of meditation. If you get it right, it's very natural. It goes by itself. The body wants to go to that deep rest state, a kind of ground state of physiological functioning. It wants to go there, it just needs the correct angle and it will automatically go there. Mm, so.